Moline is facing changes in 2019, not only throughout the city, but inside City Hall. And what do we really know about becoming an American? What does that mean in today's world and in the cities? The Quad Cities is in the midst of an ongoing discussion about immigration. It's a series of films and discussions centered on becoming American. How you can join in the discussion in a moment. But first, Moline, getting ready for 2019. The mayor has plans for the future of the city, but the city has some important posts to fill as well. It's looking not only for a city administrator, but a new chief of police. And joining us is the mayor of Moline, Stephanie Acri. I've been asking the mayors, what is the state of the city? What's the state of your city for 2019? You know, I, I think the state of Moline is transition. I mean, we're in a, a point of transition right now, but our future is so bright. I'm really excited about it. Well, let's start with the positions that you have to fill. I mean, okay. the, the city administrator is such a critically important position. What are you looking for right now? You know, the city administrator position is so important that from my perspective, it's the most important thing that the council does is selecting the right leadership for our community. And so we're, we're um, screening candidates right now and we'll be bringing candidates in for the position. Well, now, uh, Doug Maxiner had said that he left because he wasn't a good fit. We've heard that from city administrators in the past. Sometimes mm -hmm. it just doesn't work between the two. What's important for a city administrator you're looking for that will gel with the, the council members that are already on the on the city council you know we always talk about leadership being the most important skill um, and leadership means a lot of different things to a lot of different people but I think what we're looking for is someone that has a good vision for the city and can uh, rally the community behind him to or her to lead in that direction a good vision for the city that's 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 very nebulous what exactly does that mean I mean does, does it mean some of the hard choices as far as the budget is concerned and mm -hmm. personnel or is it more expansion and looking for ways to make the city stronger well the council that's in place right now uh, is very interested in controlling taxing costs and so there was there was a little bit of a conflict in our last budgeting session where administration came in with a two and a half percent increase and the council really wanted to hold it we ended up with actually a reduction in real estate taxes Tax, which was important um, as representatives to the community to make sure that our our taxing model is appropriate for our residents and so you know you have to you have to deal with that restriction is that we don't have unlimited funds but you have to invest the right way to get the best return on those tax dollars but that's one of the problems for the future for Moline because Max Einer had said when he introduced the budget back last fall October I think or mm -hmm. November is that he was saying there's anemic growth in revenues for Moline coming into this year mm -hmm. where it was only 0.3 percent that's not much growth do you see that changing in the year ahead I mean that just seems to be what your yeah. future is to be at least in the short term. I do see that changing this year. So one of the problems that we had last year was a reduction in sales tax along the John Deere corridor. Of course, and because that was, of the road construction. That was impacted by construction. And we did some things to try to minimize that, but the reality was it was very difficult to navigate. And if people got on John Deere Road, they just wanted to get through it. Mm -hmm. um, that situation is completely changed now. So anybody that's driven John Deere Road understands what a wonderful thoroughfare it is. It's the busiest um, street in the Quad Cities, and so our our um, our businesses down there have a great opportunity this year. The retail revenue, of course, is so important to Moline. It something is. that Rock Island is envious of. Uh -huh. But I mean, Moline's having its problems too, as well. I mean, you're mm -hmm. seeing the big box stores that are, that are closing around the mall. You're seeing all of the malls and shopping centers, not just South Park, yeah. but other malls, seeing some hard financial times and trying to envision what the future is going to be. Right now, we're seeing some of those box stores getting filled. We're seeing a car dealership that could be something bigger uh, mm -hmm. and, and taxes. But I mean, it's, it's a long road to hope. Yeah, I, and I think there's always going to be an evolution in the way people are spending their money, right? And so there's been a transition from the old style shopping malls, and many shopping malls are working to reinvent themselves. We've had good luck in the owners of our mall are very vested in making it work they've done a lot of different things to try to reinvent themselves we have a beautiful ashley furniture store that i invite the entire community to come visit it is gorgeous um, and we're we're looking at you know toys r us is going to evolve into a big lots you know you just have to keep with what the market is demanding mm -hmm. and and that's evolving the other area, of course, is you're also looking for a new police chief. And in a way, the new police chief search is a little bit, correct me if I'm wrong, on hold because you're waiting for the administrator to come through as well. Mm -hmm. This was a decision that you weren't expecting to make for a new police chief. How difficult is a selection process for that? 
Well, it's it's quite mandated, so there's a, a very specific process for selecting a police okay. chief that goes through different phases. We, we as a city, decided that'd be in the best interest of not only our police chief candidates, but the city administrator that'd be coming in to put that on hold temporarily. We have a great pool to choose from, but we wanted to put it on hold so that the new city administrator could be a part of that decision. Fortunately for us, we have an individual, R.T. Finney, that is serving as our interim police chief. That's so just fantastic. I just can't say enough positive things about him. He's not interested in staying permanently because he has some family commitments, but he's just doing a wonderful job for Moline. Well, and at the city council meeting at the end of February, you were discussing about changing the city attorney's duties and actually creating a corporation council, which isn't that unusual in some communities. Why, though? I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, or do you see it broke? Well, I think that you always have to be looking for efficiencies in government. We have some things that were mandated to increase. We have pension requirements. We have other things. And so you continuously have to look at, are you providing these services as efficiently as possible? And we, the council got together and we looked at some of the strategic things that we could do. And that was one of the things that came up is how do we, how do we provide our professional services for the community? And is there a better way to do it? Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about efficiencies and all that, we're coming off of a very tough winter. Mm -hmm. You've had better winters that didn't cost so much as far as overtime is concerned, as well as uh, road treatment and street treatments, and you still have a whole pothole season to come ahead of you. How, how tough has this winter been as far as the budget for, Mo for Moline right now? Well, uh, it's it's exceeding what we had planned for budget. It's it's far beyond what the average winters provide. Exactly. But you have to expect that in government, and fortunately we're financially stable city and so we can weather this storm but I have just been so pleased with the performance of our public works you know I I'll get involved in, in some complaints and our public works they are responsible for caring for over 700 miles of lane miles mm -hmm. and they do a wonderful job but sometimes they've got to go back and do a, a second check on something and they've been so responsive and I'm just I'm just so pleased with their performance they are working hard but they are getting it done but are you worried that the money that was earmarked, and as you said, all the cities are overspending, I'm sure the budget that's there, I mean, where does it come from? I mean, what's, what's not on your to-do list then for this coming year? Well, I mean, we, you always uh, plan for some contingency, mm -hmm. and so we're into our contingency for public works, and and we'll, you know, we'll look, we'll keep monitoring that, and making sure that we have the money where it needs to be. But this is an important part of what we do for the community. It's a priority for our community, and so we need to make it work. One other thing with spring coming is that we've had a lot of rash of uh, juvenile crime, of course, mm -hmm. the stealing of cars. And once again, it's not a Moline problem. It is all of the cities, but it is a Moline problem. Mm -hmm. um, are, are you, uh, uh, Davenport, I know, is trying to create more of a task force, a mo more of a uh, get the cops out on the street, more getting involved uh, publicly by having some of these uh, discussion groups and also perhaps uh, creating a whole new way so that the kids aren't going through a revolving door mm -hmm. and then coming back out to uh, re-offend. How is Moline trying to, track, uh, trying to tackle the increase in juvenile crimes as well as the, the auto thefts that it seems like it just duplicates itself? Yeah, it's a, it's a complicated problem. It's not just an easy fix. It's not like you can grab up the kids that are involved and the problem goes away. Which a lot of people believe is exactly what you need to do. Yeah. Um, that's probably not a realistic option. I mean, we have to, it, you have to get involved in those, those young people's lives and figure out what they're doing and what they could be doing instead. I, I think our police department has done a great job. I've seen them in action and they can diffuse the most uh, concerning conflict. They just have a great way about them with the public. And I think that you just have to keep on working that. You have to keep on building those relationships to get to a resolution of a problem like this. Well, what some people know and a lot of people just don't want to think about is that 2019 and 2020 are going to be years when people get to learn more about Moline than they ever thought. The I-74 bridge construction, uh -huh. which means that there's going to be detours and you're not necessarily, I think, uh, one year it's Iowa, one year it's Illinois. You're going to be getting off the bridge and going through the downtown area. Uh, that, that's the plan right now. That's we are working on that plan. And, and that's what I want to know because, yeah. because what people may not understand mm -hmm. is that for the next two years, you, it's going to be an urban highway. I mean, you're going to be having to leave the interstate bridge and drive through resident, residential streets downtown. Mm -hmm. We're working with IDOT. I have found 
both the IDOTs to be wonderfully receptive to talking through different options. The good news is, is that our commuters are resilient and they'll find their way. The bad news is, is that it, it is a difficult thing. I mean, we, we have a huge infrastructure project going on right in the middle of us, and we're going to have to navigate that. I, I would say this construction season is going to be the worst season That's for Moline. That's what I've been told, right? And so we're working with IDOT to try to minimize the inconvenience to our, our travelers. We're also working to try to promote the businesses in downtown Moline. That's what I was going to wonder is, is, is that, I mean, do you take lemonades and I mean, take lemons and make lemonade out of this? That'd be ideal. That'd be ideal. Yeah. So how do you plan to do that? Because let's be honest, people want to go from point A to point B. They don't necessarily want to make that stop. And I, I understand that, but we, we have such wonderful restaurants and, and storefronts in Moline, and so what, what our responsibility is is to make sure that we're working with those business owners to bridge this construction season. So the city of Moline has elected to bring Moline Main Street Commission back in the administration of that back into the city because we recognize it as a priority. It's very important. Our downtown area is very important, and we want to make sure that we have all of our resources going towards uh, supporting those businesses. One last question has to do with your priorities. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, we talk about the state of the city. You say the state of the city is good. How, how are you going to make it better in the year to come? Well, the, the priority of the council is taking advantage of the opportunities that are coming with the I-74 bridge. You know, this is a once in a multi-generation opportunity. We have a property in the downtown area that will be vacated by IDOT. We want to be in front of that, make sure that we're repurposing that property as in the best interests of the community. Well, and what's amazing about that property mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, the, the plumbing's already there, so to speak. Yes. I mean, you, people have to remember that that bridge hasn't always been there, mm -hmm. and so that there's already infrastructure structure that either has to be updated or can be left alone. I mean, that's a huge jewel as far as marketing that area, isn't it? Yeah, well, not many communities get the opportunity to expand their downtown area. We already have a beautiful downtown, but to have the opportunity to expand that, put in some new properties, I mean, it's just, it's just a wonderful opportunity. And so our focus is on taking advantages, taking advantage of the opportunities and partnering with the right developers, partnering with the right community members to make it all work out. And I should also point out is that you're planning a very public area as well, mm -hmm. a park system that takes advantage of, well, let's be honest, you have so many people that are living downtown right now that you mm -hmm. want to have kind of a, a leisure, a recreational type of aspect to the downtown area that you didn't see 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, we have a beautiful riverfront and we want the community to be able to enjoy it. All right. Mayor Stephanie Acre, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jim. Good luck with the city of Moline, of thank course. Thank you. In a moment, becoming American a community discussion that's going on right now. But first, here's Laura Adams. She's out and about. This is Out and About from March 3rd through 10th. It's time for the Quarter Craze and Vendor event at the Cordova Civic Center March 10th at 2. Or spend spring break playing live action Candyland at the Fairmount branch of the Davenport Public Library March 9th at 2. The Iowa Women Lead Change Conference is being held at the Quad Cities Waterfront Convention Center March 7th, or join Gigi's Playhouse for their I Have a Voice Gala March 9th, also at the Waterfront Convention Center. It's a party. Listen to a free jazz concert celebrating Big Spiderbeck's birthday March 10th at the Knights of Columbus, or listen to Scottish fiddler Alastair Fraser and cellist Natalie Haas perform at the Bishop Hill Creative Commons on the 10th. The Augustana Choir perform their home concert at the conclusion of their Midwest tour on March 10th at 3 at Centennial Hall on the campus of Augustana College, while the Augustana Symphonic Band performs March 9th at Centennial Hall at 7. The area premiere of a new comedy, Diamonds and Divas, opens at Circa 21 Dinner Playhouse, or be in the audience as All You Care to Eat, a comedy thingy, record three podcasts at the Black Box Theater in Moline, March 9th at 7.30. The sketch comedy series is performed in the style of a radio play with live sound effects, music, and readings by actors with scripts in hand. For more information, visit wqpt.org. Thank you, Laura. Keith Soko is a singer and songwriter who loves the music of Elvis Presley and Muddy Waters, but is also creating music of his own. We caught up with him as he took the stage at downtown Moline's Black Box Theater. Here's one of his own songs, Keith Soko with Something For You. I've got something for you I've got something for you I've got something for you And 
my little box of tools could go up to Griffith Park late at night when it's nice and dark look down at the city lights up at the stars oh baby you'll know just where you are because I've got something for you I've got something for you I've got something for you in my little box of tools oh honey white light white heat kind of stuff you're not gonna get on the street I got something gonna knock you out don't you know what I'm talking about I've got something for you I've got something for you I've got something for you in my little box of tools oh honey I just can't wait feel like I'm making a big mistake I got something gonna get it on out Don't you know what I'm talking about I got something that you'll never forget Oh baby, what the hell, what the heck I said I've got a ring for I've got a ring for you Won't you marry me and be true? Keith Soko, something for you. What's it mean to be American? That's not always an easy question in a nation that's made of immigrants, but it is a question being asked more often these days. And that includes a series of discussions planned in the coming weeks throughout the cities. And joining us is Anita Mayhews and Bob Conklin, both from the Moline Library, which is really coordinating this entire event that's stretching well into April. And uh, we appreciate you being here. Bob, let me start with you, I guess. Is where did this come from? Where did this idea come from? Well, it's through a grant that's through city law. That's the a New York Center of Urban Folklore. Uh, they gave out grants through the funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities to 32 sites or organizations within the United States in 24 states. Uh, we just applied um, last year, and we just got and we got the grant. Um, and, and what, what do you hope to accomplish with this? I mean, it, it's, a, it's a program that you get to discuss what it's like to be an American or to become an American. Well, what do you I, hope happens? Well, it's, it's really from a historical perspective. It's okay. not the political side, but what's That's going on what now. That's what I want to get to, right. Yeah, so we're going to have, there's different themes for the different discussions. So there's family and community. Um, there's the economic side of immigration, the work part of it. There's also the historical part from the 19th through the early 20th century, the immigrants coming in, flooding in. So there's going to be different themes for different programs. Because Anita, let's, let's, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a history lesson. America's history is immigration. Right. I, it's all of our history. It's just uh, how long the far timeline you, know, you, you come from. Yeah. So for most people, um, for most people, their timelines date back a little further, um, and for others, it's, it's a little more recent. And you're doing it in cooperation, not only the Moline mm -hmm. Library, but you were saying also the Butterworth Center, the, the, the uh, uh, Jewish Association in, in the Quad Cities, also the uh, uh, German American uh, Heritage Center as well. Yep. And the uh, Swedish Research Center at Augustana. And I know uh, 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 mm -hmm. Belgium citizens are included as well. I mean, because right. it really is a melting pot of the, of the Quad Cities. But you want to go beyond that. I mean, you really want to talk about what? Well, we want to talk about the history of where America had come from, because currently um, it is in the political discussion. Um, although we are not focused on that, uh, we just want to look at where we came from to today. Uh, 
and to celebrate our own diverse community uh, because the Quad Cities, you know, we, we still have immigrants here um, and we, it's a celebration of our own community and remembering our own past. Well, and let's talk about the current situation because you are actually going to be trying to help people become naturalized American citizens. I mean, yep. it, it, tell me the, the process that you're, you're going for and, and who you're looking to uh, include. Well, we want to include everyone and anyone. Um, you know, if you think about where, if you were an immigrant, where do you get that information from? And the process to become an American and all the legal paperwork you have to file, uh, where do you get help? and where do you get the correct information? And as a library, we are perfectly positioned for that. People come to us, not on, we're not no longer just a warehouse of, of books, but a center where they can reliably come and get information. And that completes our missions to transform people's lives um, and to celebrate who we are. Now, Bob, let's talk about, I mean, just the, the grand scale of becoming American. I mean, what does that even mean right now? Because, I mean, people are still very proud of being German, about being Hispanic, about being whatever the background is. What is being American? What is at the heart of this? That's a hard question for me to answer from you, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and let's be honest, it's, it's different for every person. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it's melting into the American society. It's becoming part of what ma ma makes America great, the United States. Because uh, I, I know that you don't want it to be a political discussion, but let's be honest, we're all proud of our backgrounds. We're all proud of being Americans, but it's almost like American is, 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 is the canopy over what all of us are. I mean, all of, I, I've got Polish blood, I got German blood. I know that because that's part of my makeup and I'm proud of that, but of course, it's an American with a capital A as well. Yeah, exactly. So these discussions are going to to explore um, the different ethnic groups, nationalities that came to America, so that we can become better aware of people's differences and the similarities that they have between each other. So these six film um, discussions are going to explore a lot of different themes. Well, let's be honest, none of them are pleasant to discuss either as well. I mean, it, yeah, when, you're, exactly. when you're taking a look at German history, you're not going to be blinded by how that history is presented in these discussions. Yeah, exactly. There's one, one discussion that's going to talk about the prejudice that immigrants have faced throughout American history. So that might be a touchy subject, but it's one of them that we're going to explore. Well, I need to, I mean, mm -hmm. You guys are librarians, you love this. I mean, just <laughs> digging into a little bit, I don't want to call it the minutia, but let's be honest, some of it is and that people can like, you're sparking discussion. Right, <clears throat> well that's part of the lifelong learning, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and as librarians that's our responsibility, is to continue these discussions um, to, make, to help us all become educated and stronger as a community rather than seeing differences. And part of that is through this, this film series. Um, but additionally, we also have some additional programs that celebrate specifically what um, our own community. So we have different presenters. Yes, yeah, I know because uh, you were you had a, a Gaelic performance. We were talking about right. uh, Belgium, German as well. Mm -hmm. um, did you find it easy for some of these organizations to say, "Yeah, we want to hop on board. We want to be a part of this." Uh, we actually we have they were more than happy to, mm -hmm. to be involved in this and as the word spread we had more organizations that wanted to come and, and be on board so Bob how does somebody get involved I mean uh, as, as just a, a layman you, you, you in the library and you guys both know this is that you tend to see a lot of the same faces all the time and you don't mm -hmm. want to preach to the choir you want to see some new faces there it's, I'm sure kids as well but mm -hmm. you just want to see some new faces how, how do you get them Tell these people, <laughs> get in my library, come, come to these. Who, who do you want to see and, and, and how can they participate? Um, well, these, these discussions are open to anybody mm -hmm. interested in the topic of immigration. And they're going to be at six different uh, sites throughout the Quad Cities. So they get, they, they get a chance to explore. Um, we're gonna ha we have the information on our website, MolineLibrary.com, where we have the schedules um, at the checkout desk or the information desk in the library. And then our partner organizations have put information about these 
on their websites too. So now is the film series regularly, like on a certain date at a certain time, now through April? Yes, uh, um, every Tuesday, um, well it just started March 5th through uh, April 9th. Um, they'll have to check the schedule because sure. the times vary but and the places oh, okay. vary too. So, so it does vary in time? Yes. But basically most, it's going to be Tuesdays? Yeah, most of them are at night. Now the Butterworth Center is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon over mm -hmm. there. But the others, I believe, are all at night. So um, a lot of folks that work and stuff are welcome to come out. And you don't want wallflowers. I mean, you no. can sit and watch TV at home. You want people to actually like come out and express some opinions or, or at least talk about the impact. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and um, just wanted to let everyone know that even if you're not able to make all of the um, the six sure. different series, these films will be available to check out after the, the program series is over. So if there's one particular documentary you, you were really hoping to see but mm -hmm. didn't work with your schedule, uh, we have we will have it available to check out at the Moline Library. And let's be honest, this is exactly what you want your mm -hmm. public library to do, right? I mean, to reach out and, and to open up some of these discussions. What do you hope somebody walks away with? I hope that they walk away um, with a better understanding of their own community mm -hmm. and perhaps their own heritage. Um, but also, I really want all the community to go and explore their library and see what they have because we have more, much more than books. <laughs> well said. Jim, can I add Absolutely. one thing? You get the last I, word. I want to mention our scholars that are the moderators. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Adam Call and Dr. Christopher Strunk. They're both professors at Augustana College. They're going to be our moderators. And they're, they have a really keen interest in immigration. Mm -hmm. So it's going to add a lot to the discussion. And, and if you don't want to take part, it's just good just sit there. I don't want to intimidate people. That, oh, I, yeah, I, I'd rather can, sit back. I mean, mm -hmm. they can just watch the film and then you're listen learn to the thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We Bob have Conlon, a lot of groups like that. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> and here, Mayhews, thank you so much thank as well you. from the Moline Public Library. Thank Once you. again, Becoming American, a series that's continuing throughout the Quad Cities well into April. Check the Moline Public Library website to get more information, dates, times, all of that stuff. Or better yet, say hi to your local librarian the next time you're at the Moline Public Library. WQPT is doing its part to support the military men and women in the cities who are serving our nation. We call it embracing the military. And the Arsenal Clubhouse wants you to celebrate St. Patrick's Day with them this month. From March 12th through the 15th, the clubhouse is holding a lunch buffet featuring, yeah, corned beef and cabbage. They'll also book large group reservations. If you want to make it a party, you can contact the clubhouse for details. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us. We talk about the issues on the cities.